These people have a basic spiritual concept which teaches them from birth the importance of love of one another and finding their greatest joys of life in doing for each other, not doing each other. I did not see any of our familiar churches and steeples. It was explained to me that there are none. Worship is not a pagan like bowing down to some mythical god or gods, but a twice daily observance to the great infinite creative course, and there is a once weekly community observance giving thanks to this source. Other spiritual aspects of Martian life include communications with those who have passed into the spirit world. In fact, every Martian considers his spirit friends and relatives a part of his daily life. Doubt the Chinese have derived their ancestor worship from this source. The Martians have also developed reincarnation to a point where it forms an integral part of their lives. They plan for a future time when they will again relieve a new life among old friends and relatives. Many children frequently identify themselves as former loved ones. I was tremendously impressed and overawed by all that I had just seen. When, passing out of the building, we entered the courtyard or foyer to the central section which is a large community stage and theater. Sitting there to rest, my guide went on to further explain some of these fascinating facets of life in these cities. He was still talking of children, and said that soon after the birth of the child, all the potential mental faculties and quotients were determined by an electronic diagnosis, and any criminal or negative characteristics were removed by the radiant energy process. The child was further conditioned against such recurrence. There are no public schools. The child is taught to a large extent in his sleep by his ear A which imparts the lessons or knowledge directly into his subconscious mind. This ray can be likened somewhat to a radio frequency which carries the spoken word yet is inaudible to the ear. In this case however, it is received and stored for use in the child's mind. Usually a child will have the equivalent to a college education by the time he has reached the age of 10. Such schooling is done to bring out the best points of character and to especially train him in whatever vocation he is best suited for. As I listened to the soft accented voice of my Martian friend, my mind inadvertently began to recall and compare scenes of my earth life with the simple quiet way I was just beginning to glimpse and understand. Things like the roaring streets and highways, the stench and smell of thousands of cars, of hate and greed and avarice. Muriel caught my thoughts and for a moment stopped speaking. A slow smile lifted the corners of his mouth and his eyes began to twinkle. No, he said, these people would not migrate to the earth. First they would have to become accustomed to the difference in air pressure, and if this were done suddenly it might be very dangerous, like a diver going down beneath the water too quickly. He paused a moment then continued. Then there would be deadly disease germs and the many viruses that we hear on Mars, not having had such things for thousands of years, have lost our resistance too. I could see his point but I wondered a bit as to how they knew so much about the Earth, but patiently he explained that there were semi-surface observatories with electronic telescopes as well as a variety of radio and radar-like devices which gave them a very good idea of what went on there. Besides some of the more advanced scientists were masters in astral flight. Even an ordinary citizen of Mars was quite adept at mental telepathy and this type of communication was used as much as speech. But I was curious about the large theater which was confronting me, however, I waited until the explanation came that this was the large central theater or community playhouse. Here the various plays, pageants, and observances took place. There were also many civic orchestras, and various kinds of folk dances were given here. Many of these customs are of ancient origin and the meaning of some has almost been lost in antiquity. I was privileged to see part of a spring festival. Here on the great central stage several hundred children were gathered in large circles are decorated profusely with flower garlands, in the center was the Queen of Spring. 
The children were all moving slowly to and fro and chanting a slow sing-sung rhythm. It was all very beautiful and color. Going back into the ring-shaped building, we emerged into a lot where some of the chambers used for judging or administrative phases. The government is a very simple form. I was amazed when told there are no written laws. Each citizen lives under a simple understanding of a written code. It was a very reasonable fashion mile, if not the actual golden rule. In other words, do for others first. If a person acts selfishly, or begins to steal or shows symptoms of anger, he is considered ill and treatment is quickly administered. Each five families have a group leader or ifla, as he is called. He represents this group and is responsible for their general welfare. The judges or heads of different departments are chosen on their merit and it is usually done through elimination, examinations which require a lifetime of special training. There are no political systems. Brains and character alone determine a candidate's fitness for an office. Male and female are regarded as equal and with no discrimination shown. There are no old age institutions in these Martian cities. Great respect is shown the aged and they live with their children until the time of passing. No doubt the Chinese on the earth brought this custom of respect and veneranz down through the ages from their Martian ancestors. Passing along through a hallway, we again emerged into a lot I immediately gathered to be a library. Here a number of persons were busily engaged in sorting and caring for a large variety of books, if they can be compared to ours. These were for the most part, rather ancient scroll-like volumes, but there were others which resembled somewhat our own bound volumes. I was told that this library was kept mostly for research and for historical reasons, as comparatively little reading or writing is done in our usual manner. Most records are kept in memory machines or some other unfamiliar electronic device. The alphabet consists of a number of cryptograms. I did not linger long enough, however, to go into things of this nature in detail. Another thing that did impress me was the wide variety of pictures and objects of art which were everywhere. These people are exceedingly artistic and almost everyone spends some time at this particular chosen expression decorating screens, ceramics, furniture, etc. All were given some treatment whenever opportunity presented. It was all in very good taste, however, and most pleasing to the eye. These traits are quite evident in our modern Chinese. Going through several of these offices we again emerged into the open air. Before us was one of the larger radial streets, coming down this street was what looked like a silver gondola of some sort, suspended from an overhead rail. Going closer to examine this strange craft, I found that it was about 20 feet long. It had six or eight bucket-like seats. There is a rather elaborate system of all of course, electronically. There is an eye on each end to keep it spaced a reasonable distance from other cars. Gyroscopes are used to sense way and it is powered by a motor in each flanged wheel which rides a single rail, suspended at short intervals by metal standards. These cars are stopped with a single blast of a noiseless supersonic whistle and started after the passengers sit down. A number of the main radial streets have this monorail shuttle car system. Others used moving sidewalks, somewhat similar to escalators. Inside the tubes, which are the Martian cities, are these little shuttle cars, used for transportation. At this point my inspection of these very interesting monorail cars was interrupted by what appeared to be a gay group of people going into a one of the nearby homes. As they disappeared, laughing and chatting through the doorway, I turned and looked inquiringly at Muriel. He smiled, as he informed me there was a marriage going on. He went on to explain that marriage is very sacred here, very rarely is there a separation or a divorce. As children, couples are selected according to their mental quotient and their compatibility. Further work in preparation is done until the time 
when they are actually joined marriage, usually around the age of 12 or 15, as compared to louder years. These marriage ceremonies last for about three days. The first day is spent in the exchanging of gifts between the respective families. The second day is devoted to mind projection and various semi-secret preparations. The whole affair climaxes on the evening of the third day with a banquet. Sitting on opposite sides of the long low table, the close relatives of the bride and groom eat a silent meal, not glancing up or looking across the table during the entire time. This silence is broken by the two fathers, or in the case of their absence, the mothers can't substitute by the sharing of a cup made from the juices of certain fruits. After this, the cup is passed around and the whole thing ends up with several hours of merrymaking. Then a parade takes the newlyweds to their new home. But to return to the subject of transportation, it seems that these people do not travel much, as compared to our earth people. There is, of course, considerable intercity travel over the monorail car system which I saw in the tube. There is, however, a kind of communication which renders a great deal of travel unnecessary. This is a form of telephone, or teleview, as it could more properly be called. Besides conversing, each party can't see the other one through a small screen similar to louder television. This, of course, can be shut off by manipulating a button, in the event there is a need for privacy. Speaking of television, their system is far more advanced than ours, the screen is built into the wall of the room and is about 4 by 5 foot square. All programs are in three-dimensional color, very lifelike and natural. Such programs are, of course, the very highest type. As there is only one channel to a city, all program material is produced and telecast by the people themselves, since there is no advertising or sex intimations but only such things as the festivals, lectures, various stage presentations or musicals which take place in the central theater. Little or no news is broadcast and then only that which is of a nature which would not cause fear or restlessness. Music plays an important part in life here. Most of the instruments are of the string type and are usually plucked. There are some reed or flute-like instruments which help give variety. There are none of the heavy percussive type which form a large part of our modern orchestras. The music itself is, for the most part, a quaint sing song like rhythm or chant which usually depicts some story or moral lesson or even historical events are portrayed. Considerable color is used in the stage presentations, which gives much added charm, as the innumerable color combinations rise and fall with the rhythm of the chant. Since my initial trip, I have returned to Mars several times and have learned much more about this fascinating civilization. To those who are proponents and ardent supporters of our free enterprise system, let it be said that they have a great shop coming to them. On Mars there is no dog-eat-dog -dog competition such as we, on Earth, are so familiar with. Everyone works for the government, because the government is the people. This highly developed socialistic system is not to be confused with any so-called communistic governments on Earth. The Martians never break laws, consequently there are no laws. They have long ago eliminated legislative bodies. How different here. We have a huge and vast intricate network of legislative bodies, as well as various branches of law enforcement. The average American has many thousands of laws to obey. The great majority of the people either knowingly or unknowingly are breaking laws. As fast as a way is found to circumvent one law, a new one is passed to prevent this. The modern Chinese have placed a great deal of personal value on face they would rather die than lose face. This sense of personal integrity was brought down through the ages from their Martian ancestors. The average Martian has an advanced state of conscious personal integrity. This eliminates the ponderous and very expensive system of government to which we are accustomed. There is in consequence a vastly simplified way of life. There are no taxes, as this land is run like a highly ordered non-profit business. 
The various departmental or executive heads are all highly trained specialists and hold their positions because of ability and integrity. Another thing which some Earth people would miss on Mars is money. They actually use no money. Therefore there is no banking system. The citizen of Mars is, in a sense, his own bank and his medium of exchange is his honesty, his credit. Everyone works. There are no loafers or unemployed. They all take great pride in their vocation. Work is not done for personal gain or selfish reasons. There is on Mars no sense of insecurity for all are provided for including the aged and the incompetent. A working person is provided with a metal plate whereon are stamped his or her name and an identifying number. This plate is used in the large automat-like dispensers which I was shown on the lower floor level. When a person desires food, clothing, or whatever the need, he merely inserts this charge of plate, if I can call it such, and withdraws it, along with the article. As he is a very honest person, he never gets more than he needs or is entitled to. This is done strictly on his own personal sense of honor and integrity. As he has no sense of insecurity, he never hoards or takes more than he requires. We can imagine what would happen if our great hordes of dishonest, grasping, selfish people were turned loose in the Martian cities. There are none of the conveyor belt line techniques that we use here, although they are very advanced in science, electronics and machinery, yet there are a great many handmade products. They realize that a vast productive system would only defeat their way of life. The more a man works the more he can take home, so, if a machine takes his place, he has nothing. An article is valued only for its usefulness and not for the profit it might bring. There is some semi-private enterprise. In case a person makes some product in his spare time, he may open a booth where it is displayed. All such enterprises operate on a barter exchange system. As there are no profits, these private exchanges consequently are not running in competition with any other. I have gone to some length in trying to point out and explain what is very obviously a superior way of life. We Americans have for a long time prided ourselves as having the best way of life on Earth. This is quite true as far as Earth is concerned but not in a broad and limited view. As Einstein once said, we are never fools, until we quit seeking. In our present democratic system which is actually capitalistic, we have long passed the point of diminishing returns. A government should be of the people and we should not lose this goal in our haste for our profits. The average citizen of the earth has a state of existence something like a with circus animal. Yes. It is quite true that we have a higher level of life than many other countries, but what a price we are paying for this. And couldn't we get something better, if we tried? But back to our Martian friends. From childhood they are taught to be useful and productive. Because of their simplified living habits, they have more time for self-improvement and for developing new types of plastics, textiles, etc. They usually limit their meals to only two a day and even those are very simple, consisting primarily of 